O oh, Barnard's star, our sun's closest solitary neighbor, your ancient red-lit face still pains my heart. How many times have you raised hope of other worlds, only to yank it away? I could continue to wax poetic about this, but the answer's three. A stern track record for a star we've barely known for a hundred years. First, in the 1960s, the eternally hopeful Peter van de Kamp, head of the Sproul Observatory, claimed to have found an entire retinue of planets around you by observing your motion through the heavens. They turned out to be a fault in the telescope. Then in 2018, a Spanish-led team thought they had detected a three-Earth mass planet around you. Three years later, it was disproven. And now, now you have planets. Four of them. Confirmed. Four venerable attendants circling you for 12 billion years. And yet, from the looks of things, they might as well be empty tombs. The planets were discovered in two waves. The first came in October 2024, when another Spanish-led team employed the European Southern Observatory's very large telescope's ESPRESSO, a shell spectrograph for rocky exoplanet and stable spectroscopic observations machine, located Barnard B, an object of roughly a third of an Earth mass, orbiting its diminutive parent star about once every three days. With an equilibrium temperature, temperature if it lacked an atmosphere, of 165 Celsius, it stirred no one's minds with thoughts of life. The second wave occurred in March 2025, when a suspicion of the previous team inspired a follow-up study employing both Espresso and Maroon X, the M-dwarf Advanced Radial Velocity Observer of neighboring exoplanets. A recently installed spectrograph on the Gemini Telescope in Hawaii specifically designed to find Earth-sized planets around nearby red dwarfs. They confirmed the existence of three other planets, all, unfortunately, also below Barnard Star's habitable zone. The farthest orbits its star in less than a week. The system is incredibly compact. The fourth planet is just twice as far from its star as the first. Conversely, in our solar system, the fourth planet, Mars, is four times farther than Mercury. The planets range in mass from 0.193 Earth masses, slightly higher than Mars, to 0.335 Earth masses, making Barnard a peas-in-a-pod system. Like TRAPPIST-1, and indeed the majority of known multiple planet systems, in which all planets are of similar size. This is very much not like our system, in which the masses of even the inner planets vary by as much as 20 times. The lowest mass planet in the Barnard system, E, is also the smallest planet ever detected via the radial velocity method, which, because it relies on the gravitational tugs planets give their stars, is primarily used to find large planets. The radial velocity method can give us no information beyond mass and orbital period, and so we can only speculate about what features these worlds may possess. The omens, however, are not good. All four planets are sub-Earths, a mass category absent from our solar system, and so we have no nearby examples to serve as templates. Granting the most massive of these planets a density equivalent to Earth, the densest planet in our solar system, then its radius would be about 4,300 kilometers, two-thirds Earth's. Barnard's star is mellowing in its old age, but if other red dwarfs are any indication, in its youth it flared and raged with evil abandon. It is possible that the system's planets migrated inward from safer regions, though if they did, it was within Barnard's protoplanetary disk, which would have dissipated after a few hundred million years. If so, they must have borne the brunt of Barnard's infantile tantrums for millions, possibly billions, of years. The precise size required to maintain a molten dynamo in a planet's core is unknown, but if Venus, which is only 10% smaller than Earth, lost its dynamo, it seems unlikely that any of Barnard's planets did not. Without a dynamo to maintain an electromagnetic field, their atmospheres would have been subjected to Barnard's monstrous stellar wind, which likely would have ripped their atmospheres from their surfaces. Twelve billion years is a long time, long enough for a planet to regenerate its atmosphere once a star has calmed down. 
Unfortunately, Barnard's star has not calmed down. In fact, it flares so frequently that it could completely erode any nascent atmosphere within a few hundred million years. With 99% certainty, where have I heard that before, the team have ruled out any planet in Barnard's habitable zone above 0.37 to 0.57 Earth masses. Given that, it seems likely that even if it exists, it is just another sterile rock. I hope I'm wrong. A biosphere persisting for longer than our planet has existed would be a discovery worthy of legend. Barnard's star may yet reveal such a world, if not a world of rock and soil, perhaps one of ice and carbon, as I imagined in my first video on Barnard's star. Twelve billion years, after all, is a long time for nothing to happen.